Hello there guys, it's me Unstable Voltage. Welcome back to episode 20 of Europa Universalis 4 as Mala. We are currently just trying to unseat some stuff that was taken by some separatists in the last video and recuperate some manpower and gain some money back and catch up on tech. Uh, biggest problem I've got in this campaign right now is that we are almost two institutions behind so we're paying almost double for our tech which is really, really bad. Um, but everyone around us, I don't know, is everyone around us in the same boat? What's everyone else's tech on? This is something that I haven't actually checked. Um, military level 9 compared to our 10. Um, where can I see everyone's overall military level? Um, so you're 799. We're 10, 10, 10. 799, 889, 678. Yeah, we... 899, 799, 899, 10, 9, 7, 7, 10. So I am actually ahead in tech by all of my neighbours. I'm ahead in tech over all of my neighbours. So even though we've got these massive tech penalties, my neighbours do too. And it's my neighbours that it's most relevant to. So, yeah, I'm not that bothered, actually. I'm not as concerned about that as I was. Let's finish getting these calls done. We're 48% overextended now. Uh, lose 40 admin power or lose some ducats. Uh, those who handle large sums of money have always been tempted to claim more than their share of it, and tax collectors are no exception. However, while money getting lost along the way may be a price we can afford to pay, affluent citizens have now found that they can avoid some taxes altogether by paying large bribes to taxmen instead. Currently, this seems to be a scheme supported by some of the older collectors trying to retire comfortably. While it is costly, we might be able to avoid... Um, spending time and effort on the detailed investigation if we just wait it out. Let them retire. They've served as well in the past. At the minute, I make gold easier than I make admin points, and admin points are slightly more important, so we'll just let that sort of pass. So we do still need to try and build up our larger army. Uh, let's move you over here where we're expecting this thing to fire. Let's go ahead and turn these forts off, because they are costing us some money as well. We don't need to have them on. So we'll go ahead and turn those off. So that'll be useful to us. Uh, so I do have a few mercenaries here that I would like to get rid of. We've got four mercenaries. See, we don't have a lot of men for reinforcing. That's our big problem right now. And we do still have some, um, some rebels that may spawn. Um, let's go and... We've got four infantry here. Let's go and replace the four infantry and then we'll get rid of the mercenaries. I don't want to drop below having 40,000 men if possible. There's the rebel triggering and it actually went quite well for us there. We did lose uh, almost 3,000 men. Not, not brilliant, but not terrible either. Uh, so we can grab a province off Idar. Or we can lose our claim. We'll lose the claim. There's no point me having claims on provinces that my vassal owns because I'm going to integrate them anyway. I mean, obviously, there are things... Oh, getting some random money. There are things that could happen, like someone could declare a war on me and uh, force me to give up um, Idar as a vassal, which would be uh, a problem. Um, but I don't really see it being an issue. Uh, let's go ahead here while we're paused and we will break. I don't know why I keep doing that. I keep forgetting there is actually a button or at least used to be a button to split off mercenaries. Um, yeah, detach mercenaries. I should just do that. I keep forgetting to do it. Let's go ahead and get rid of the mercs. That will save us some monthly money. Um, while Mauer typically relies on Jane banking families to finance state loans, the Janes are far from the only financiers in the realm. Several Brahmin families also engage in banking. Representatives of the Brahmins argue the case favouring their services over the Janes. While we cannot offer the same low interest rates, they stress that the confidence of the Hindu people in Brahmin leadership will correspond to increased faith in the Malwani economy. Uh, reduce interest per annum or cheaper stability cost modifier. I don't think we've got any interest per annum, so I'm going to go for the reduced stability cost modifier because I would like to get up to... Um, I would like to get up to two stability. It'll make us more money, so I'm going to go ahead and do that straight away. Uh, we'll start considering building up a third army stack. 
once we have some manpower. So yeah, lacking in innovativeness. But I did notice that um, if we go and look at the institutes, we are starting to get it down here. It's probably going to go into Delhi first. Cinder going to get it first. Um, 50, they're actually starting to get the Renaissance. So maybe that'll spread into Kutch and then into our own lands. That's kind of what I'm hoping. That we'll get the, the, the neighbor bonuses soon. And then we can start um, reducing our tech costs. Um, we've got these separatists here in Gorakhpur, um, which is that province on the end. So let's move you over. So we've got Tirut here. Tirut, what are you guys up to? Who are you friendly with? You have no alliances. You're being guaranteed by Janpur. That's actually interesting. We could start a war there and pull Janpur in without Janpur pulling in our, um, Arakan. Not that Arakan are a big problem, but... That potentially gives us another way to, to take another bite out of Jeanpour. We do still have a lot of aggressive expansion, however. Um, some of that isn't going to go away anytime soon. 127 with Delhi. Uh, but, I mean, we could grab Jeanpour. Jeanpour itself, as in the province of Jeanpour. Uh, 50, uh, 16 development. Um, it's not a center of trade, but still, it's, it's a good province. We also want to get lower Dab as well. Because that is actually a market town. Um, reduce local manpower, but that's fine. But yeah, grabbing that. So ideally, like all three of those provinces, we've got a claim on that. We've got a claim on that. We've got a claim on Jampur. So we could definitely grab that if we were willing to get a claim over here. It is a little bit risky and we're already overextended, but... I think I'd like to have more manpower before risking it. I, I, I know that I could I could beat Jampur easily and take that from them. My concern is um, the coalition that would come soon after. Uh, royal marriage offer from Idar. wasn't aware that it had broken. Obviously, our leader had died, but I'd, I'd completely forgotten about that. Um, are there any places here that we don't have claims on that we could get claims on? I mean, yes, we could get claims on this. And get claims on this. So might as well get claims on stuff that we can get claims on. Let's go ahead over here and get somebody um, building a spy network. Are there any states that we can make? Jampur's rivaled me. That's fine. Um, we could make this into a state, actually. Just thinking about it, Jampur have rivaled me. Um, I might stop rivaling Vijayanagar because there isn't a lot of point in being rivaled to Vijayanagar. I can't easily get to them. They are not my... Um, it's going to cost us 105 Diplo, which is a pain. But we're going to do that and we are going to rival Jampur. Uh, we've got a costly embargo, which we are going to... Uh, We need to bring somebody back. You're building a spy network. Let's bring you back from Jampur. Uh, we're going to revoke our embargo against you guys. So we've lost our CB against them. But maybe, just maybe, um, uh, we want to go ahead and issue an embargo here. I'll still have a truce. Okay, fine. Well, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Uh, so we've lost our trade dispute against them. So I'm hoping now that they actually become friendly towards me. They are still rivaled. Um, Baman is their only enemy. But I'm thinking that I'm too far away for them really to do anything. Uh, improved relations has dropped. So let's go over there and try and get them positive. They may then break the rivalry. It's unlikely, but I'm always willing to give it a go. I'm always willing to try things like this out. So we're starting to get some manpower back. We do have some money. If I can get up to a decent number of men, uh, then we can try and go for Jampur. So what I can do is I can get a claim over on this land, on this province here. I can attack these guys, but just take this land from Jampur. Uh, I think it's probably worth doing it just to get that extra um, extra trade power there. We've lost our military guy. Uh, let's take the morale of armies. Always useful in a war.
Are you busy in any other things? No, you've got your alliances. How how are our relations with Transoxiania over here? They still like me quite a bit. Got some aggressive expansion, but that'll go away. I think we're safe there. See, I don't even have to wait for the truce on Jampor to expire. This is this is the clever thing here. I could literally just go and attack them now. With with the men that let's 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 wait for this rebellion spawn first because we're gonna we're gonna take a manpower hit there. Lose thirty diplo. Well, I don't I don't want Transoxiana's opinion of me to change. Um, I'm gonna maintain that diplomat just for a little while at Vijaynagar. I'm going to go ahead and recruit one military unit over here so I can start to build a stack around them. Uh, Vijayanagar's opinion of us changed by minus 50. Which would reduce local unrest. Local, so it's only in one province. Or Mandla can get local unrest, local trade power down, but local goods up. I'm going to do that. I want to try and get Vijaynagar friendly. I would really love it if they would stop being... Um, yeah, allied to rival. That's because we're allied with Orissa. Uh, if that gr aggressive expansion burns off, though, that'll help. So we'll, we'll wait for that aggressive expansion to burn off. Uh, I'm going to go and manually set my attitude towards them. I can't set it as friendly uh, because I don't have at least 50 opinion. I want to. I want to. I want to be their friend. Don't. Don't. The game is forcing me not to be their friend. Mission is also almost done his work. We could go ahead and grab the yearly army tradition. I mean, it, it would be worth getting up to this morale of armies. But we are falling behind the time. I think I'm just going to save up and try and grab the next level of tech, if possible. Uh, that's probably the sensible thing to do. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do. Might not work out that way. It doesn't always, but we'll we'll see how that goes. So I could probably... Um, no, I can't, can't reduce the autonomy there anymore. I mean, I could move out of the province... Which would make this more likely to fire. At the moment, it's going to be uh, 6.9 years. Uh, I didn't really want to take a river crossing, but we'll move over here. We'll, we'll try and promote it to trigger more quickly, if possible. And uh, yeah, I'll build, I'll build this army up. Trying to make sure that we do keep in some positive money. So let's go and get up something like that. Obviously, that's just spent quite a bit of our manpower, but... We don't want to mess around too long. But yeah, those three provinces I'd love to try and grab from Jampor quite quickly if possible. Uh, we should be able to get a claim up here already, and we can. That's excellent. Uh, we can now bring you back. We've got the claim. We don't need anything else from you. You're not allied with anyone. You're being guaranteed by Jampor. That is all we need in order to try and take some land from Jampor. We'll be a lot more aggressive expansion again, but I think that is something that we can deal with. Uh, what are you at now? 1.2 years. Yep, so much more likely. There's there's actually a few rebel factions that are looking like they're going to spawn. Uh, and I'd like to deal with all of them if I can. Um, how many military leaders uh, am I permitted? Uh, I can have two. And we have two. I could make my ruler into a military leader, of course. Um, he's 56. He's a 354. I don't think I want to lose him. We don't have an heir either or a consort, which is a, a little bit annoying. So we do really want to get a new, a new, uh, a new air and consort. So we've got these ones that um, might pop here. Um, you are in Bangar and Bagalakand, which are where these two provinces here. Let's stop you guys drilling. Let's get you over here. So we've got a couple of provinces that that might fire. Um, Still making 6.66 ducats a month, even with the start of the second army. Using a bit more now. Uh, what are we like on ships, by the way? Uh, we can have two more ships. Well, trade fleets is trade fleets. Why aren't you guys moving? Um, you are supposed to be protecting trade. Oh, that's why, because it, it's the fleet that I got from... Um, 
It's the fleet that I got from these guys yeah, uh, when I vassalized, annexed these guys. Compurchase ability. Okay, what do we take here? Uh, resistance to reformation is pointless. Blockade impact on siege, pointless. War score cost versus other religions could be useful. Uh, mercenary discipline, ship trade power propagation, institution spread in true faith provinces. Institution spread. That's what we want. Most of our provinces are true faith. We've got most of our provinces converted. Um, so yeah, anything that we can use to speed up... I mean, there needs to be an institution to spread in the first place. But anything... That, yeah, it's starting to spread to Kutch now. And it, it, and it's uh, Re Renaissance is already present over here in Sin. So we will start to get the tech. Fantastic. It's what we need. It's what we need. Vijaynagar is currently at zero. So things are improving there. So yeah, I'm definitely going to want these to, to trigger... Zero will rest in this province because I'm actually standing in it. So it's now saying 3.8 years. So let's go ahead and stand in this province instead. Only a 6.1% chance per month of that one firing anyway. I mean, that might even start going down. It's quite possible that that happened. You can guarantee the, the, best, the best way to get it to fire is for me to start a war. Because you can guarantee the moment a war starts that the, the rebels are going to spawn. Because that's just, just how this works. Um, how is our aggressive expansion? So like, people are leaving the coalition. Uh, Jampor have a truce with us. But if we jump on Jampor straight away, they won't be able to get in um, a coalition against us. Um, where's our aggressive expansion with you? 32. So we'd probably get a fair bit for doing this. But it still might be worthwhile. It's always risky when there could be a coalition, but we'll still go for it. Are Vijaynagar in a war with anybody? They're not currently. Um, okay, if we end up having to deal with rebels, we end up having to deal with rebels. So be it. Uh, but we're going to go in and we're going to try this. So if we... Let's just pause up and just double check this is going to work. Uh, if we declare war on you, you will bring in Jampor. Idar will come in. Transoxiana won't because he doesn't owe his favours. Orissa and Gorka could come in if we called them. I'm not going to call them. We'll save the favours. Let's wait for it to tick on to the first of the month. We are going to declare war. Jampor will come in. Not calling in our allies. They're not needed. We're going to march straight over here with this stack. You're going to march straight into Jampor. Um, that is actually your army. Let's go ahead and just turn a couple of these forts on. Just to try and hamper their movement. Yep, Jamport instantly trying to head to the south. I might just run in and just try and take Jampor's armies, actually. Gain one innovativeness. Estates lose some loyalty. All the estates gains loyalty and we get tolerance of to the true faith. No, I want the innovativeness. So these guys are going to come down here and try and be a pain in the butt. Let's turn that fort on as well to try and stop them heading that way if possible. Uh, can I just move into this province? No, not without taking the long way around. I think we'll just sit up here then and try and take Jampor. We'll probably get it pretty quickly. Um, let's keep building this stack up if we can. I know it's losing manpower for us, but we do want to try and get this stack built together if at all possible. You're going to come up here and start helping with some stuff. They're probably just going to go and sit on that fort. And indeed they are. I'm up to 0% here. So I'm kind of loathed to give up that, that progress, to be honest. Um, where are you heading? You're heading there. Can I get there? Yes, I can. But you're not movement locked. So let's wait for you to be movement locked, which you now are. So I'm going to move in with a 20 stat to your 7. Will you break the siege to come and help? Yes, you will. Excellent. So, I did lose my siege on Jampor, but that's fine. We've just stat wiped their army, which is excellent. Rebel Uprisings, which we already knew about. Uh, we've already got this province. Excellent. Um, let's move you in down here and take this fort. So, we've lost a few men, but that's fine. We are building another army up here, so we can always use you to try and 
uh, chase this guy down. I know they don't have a leader, but they don't really need a leader. Um, they've got another cannon coming, which they don't really need for this battle. So we'll go and do that. So you're moving in with a 12 stack. You are moving into Varsi and you're already locked. Or Va Varanas, I should say. Uh, so let me jump straight in there and take that fight. Um, hopefully we'll get some decent rolls. We had some rolls, but they've not really been decent. Okay, so that, that did a fair amount of damage there. Did I get that one stack? No, you are heading quite a way out there, aren't you? Uh, I'm not going to bother chasing this stack. Am I going to chase this stack down? Probably should. I mean, sieging is great, but... You know, kill units when you can kill units. That's a stack wipe, so that's clearly better. Um, so there's a few little, like, one stacks down here. I mean, I'm chasing this guy, and it's probably a complete waste of my time. Because it's not even a full stack, so he can't even siege anything. But point one war score for nothing, so... Yeah, I'll take that. I will take it. These guys are going to sort of shuffle up and try and form together. We need to go and grab this, actually. Uh, let me just go and tell um, Idar to go and grab that. Um, because if they do grab it, then these guys won't be able to uh, produce any more units. So we've got this 15 stack over here. We are losing some manpower. So I might just bring this guy over and just try and sort of guard the border a little bit. You can see they are trying to put an army together. Uh, where are you guys heading? You're all heading over there. So we don't have a leader here. Um, but we can catch we can catch a few little stacks completely off guard. Um, you are going to stay there. We can grab you before you have a chance to do anything. So you can't get out. So we're already at 41%. So they are getting some little stacks over in this direction. But it really isn't going to help them out. We've got a 21% chance to grab Jampur. We've got a 35% chance that we're going to grab this province over here. And, for once, the game actually worked in my favour. I'm just going to quickly split this army into two, just for the sake of grabbing some of these provinces a little more quickly. Lots of guys around here being a colossal pain, but I can't do too much about that. Uh, looks like I might be able to catch some of these units and do some damage. You know, even just picking off a couple of units here and there really does reduce their ability to harm me later on. Got a five stack together there, but that's not going to help them long. 57% on Jampur, or 57% chance that we grab Jampur at the end of the siege tick. Uh, so quite looking forward to that. Uh, that was a pretty big engagement there because they've got their leader. But that is fine. We still won the fight anyway. So we are at the point now where we're out of manpower. So that is something that we do have to take into consideration. We don't want to lose too many more men in the battle. We've won the Siege of Jampur. Let's go and move um, down here and catch some of these one stacks. However... We are over the 20 minute mark, so I'm going to end the video here. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope you are still enjoying EU4. I'll see you on the next video, and until then, goodbye for now.